COSHH explained. Topics to be covered. What COSHH is. What COSHH covers. What COSHH does not cover. COSHH symbols and meanings. Why COSHH is important. What does COSHH require? Hazardous substances to health. The different hazardous substances. Hazardous substances at the workplace. Where are hazardous substances found? What is a substance hazardous to health under COSHH? What is not a substance hazardous to health under COSHH? Effects of hazardous substances. What is COSHH? The best way to understand what COSHH is is to determine what the letters stand for, which is the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations Act 2002. These are regulations that are in place to keep us safe from chemicals and other substances in the workplace that we do not want to have anywhere near us, or at least not without the correct safety equipment and precautions in place. The name of this legislation is quite a mouthful, so you'll find most people refer to this Act and all matters relating to it as COSHH. What is a hazardous substance? A hazardous substance is any substance that can cause us harm and even death. They usually reach us through inhalation, our skin. The type of injuries and disease sustained by such substances are wide and varied, but they are always serious, which is why there is such complex legislation in place. There are more details about hazardous substances coming up further on in this module. Some types of hazardous substances can be dangerous rather than harmful and need controls in place because they might cause explosions, intensify or fuel a fire, seriously damage nature or the environment. What COSHH covers? COSHH covers the common hazardous substances often found in the workplace. COSHH guides us on how we must handle, store and control hazardous substances so that we may reduce the risk of harm and injury to ourselves and others as much as possible. There are also other regulations in place that influence COSHH and in Module 2 we cover some of these regulations in more detail. As you will come to see, controlling and managing hazardous substances is a complicated matter which reflects in the legislation. COSHH does not cover COSHH does not cover any substances that have separate regulations. These substances usually have their own set of regulations due to the nature of the substance. Just because COSHH doesn't cover these types of substances doesn't mean that you should handle them without precaution. Usually, these are substances that require more regulations and more control than the substances we are focusing on in COSHH. Typical examples of the types of substances not covered by COSHH are asbestos, flammables, explosives, radioactive materials. As you can imagine, these types of substances require a high level of control. Their safety precautions will be more complex 
and entirely different from the common substances that COSHH covers. We discuss this topic in more detail further on in this module. COSHH Symbols and Meanings There are specific regulations in place that require all producers of hazardous substances to clearly label the packaging of these substances as hazardous. Those regulations are the CLP regulations, which we discuss further in Module 2. COSHH has nine hazard symbols that they use to comply with CLP and which feature on the packaging of all hazardous substances. When you understand why these symbols feature on the packaging, you should consider it to be a warning that the risks of harm are severe and that precautions need to be in place. The most recent COSHH symbols are diamond in shape, with an orange or red border and a black symbol on a white background, though there are some older COSHH symbols which are black squares with an orange symbol that you might also come across. There are nine newer COSHH symbols which feature on all packaging of hazardous substances in the workplace to signify substances that are flammable, explosive, oxidizing, gases under pressure, corrosive, toxic, dangerous for the environment, a health hazard such as skin irritations, a serious health hazard, such as those that can cause cancer. If these substances are in the workplace, you have legal duties to take caution, which we explain in more detail in Module 2. Why is COSHH important? As you may already have realised by now, Chemicals and other hazardous substances are dangerous, but the risk of danger and harm to health increases tenfold when you use them in a workplace. That's because the variety of hazardous substances used in the workplace is wide. The frequency of exposure to hazardous substances in the workplace is very high which means that the risk to health when using hazardous substances in the workplace is much higher than in any other circumstances. COSHH regulations are in place to protect employees from exposure to these substances by controlling the use of them. COSHH also provides proper management procedures by setting out eight steps to help employers manage the risks involved concerning hazardous materials. These steps are a valuable management tool, but employers are also required by law to implement them at all times. What does COSHH require? There are eight steps that employers need to follow in order to comply with COSHH regulations. Step 1. Assess the risks. In this step, you'll need to look into each hazardous substance and take some time to assess and evaluate the risks each substance has to the health of employees or anybody else exposed to the substance. We discuss this in more detail in Module 5. Step 2. Decide what precautions are needed. COSHH specifies that employers must not carry out work which could expose employees to hazardous substances without considering the risks beforehand. Employers cannot proceed with any work until they determine all necessary precautions and also factor in everything else they must do to comply with COSHH. You'll learn more about this in Module 6. Step 3. Prevent or adequately control exposure. To comply with COSHH, 
employers must prevent employees from enduring any exposure to hazardous substances as far as is reasonably practicable. If employers cannot prevent exposure, they must control it. In other words, employers must prevent their employees from being exposed to hazardous substances under COSHH, where preventing exposure is not reasonably practicable, they must control the exposure sufficiently so that it doesn't risk an employee's health. There's much more detail on this topic in Module 7. Note. Reasonably practicable means that you must remove the risk as far as you can. If you can't complete your work effectively without the substance, then all risks of exposure must be controlled. Step 4. Ensure control measures are used and maintained. Once the employer has determined what control measures they need to have in place to remove or reduce the risks, they must then ensure that these control measures are used, followed and also maintained at all times. Modules 6 and 7 bring more information about how to do this and also how to complete the rest of the eight steps too. Step 5. Monitor the exposure. Even though control measures are in place, it's still important to monitor the exposure of the substance to employees to ensure that no changes occur over time. Step 6. Carry out appropriate health surveillance. If you have identified at any point in any of the steps above that health surveillance should be conducted, or if COSHH has set specific requirements for health surveillance, then employers are duty-bound to put these in place. You'll learn more about health surveillance in Module 7. Step 7. Prepare plans and procedures to deal with accidents, incidents and emergencies. It's not just the everyday factors involved with dealing with hazardous substances that an employer needs to consider. They also need to plan procedures for those one-off situations such as an accident, incident and emergency. Module 7 will cover more information about how to do this. Step 8. Ensure employees are properly informed, trained and supervised. Employees must be informed, supervised, trained correctly and continually. Hazardous substances to health. The phrase hazardous substances to health covers a topic that can be very detailed and complex. So it makes sense to take some time to look into the necessary and treacherous world of hazardous substances to health in more detail. In particular, what types of hazardous substances there are where you can find hazardous substances to health in the workplace. What COSHH considers to be a hazardous substance and what it does not. Different hazardous substances. Sometimes it can be surprising to discover that some substances are hazardous to health. Other times it might seem as though it's really just a case of common sense and looking out for the warning signs. That's not how COSHH would like things to be. Sure, the warning signs are there for your safety, but if you are working with hazardous substances, you'll need to have a bit more information than a warning sign to stay safe. Hazardous substances at the workplace. You'll find no end of hazardous substances in the workplace. It's easy to assume that they are neatly packaged in a handy bottle with an appropriate warning label on, but that's not the case. Here is the reality. Some substances hazardous to health are created in the workplace, either in manufacturing or through carrying out the work. For example, Fumes created from workplace activities, such as soldering. 
There are natural substances that are hazardous to health, such as grain dust. We use many substances that are hazardous to health in our work activities, paints, glues, cleaning products. Biological substances that are hazardous to health include microorganisms such as bacteria. Where are hazardous substances found? Hazardous substances feature in almost all work environments. Even if you are not regularly exposed to hazardous substances, they could become present. Think about the emergency services who were present when the World Trade Center collapsed. Many of them died after the incident due to respiratory issues caused by the dust and debris. You'll find hazardous substances in work environments such as farms, swimming pools, factories, mines, laboratories, hospitals and medical establishments, offices, building sites. What is a substance hazardous to health under COSHH. COSHH considers a wide variety of substances to be hazardous to health. But, as we've already mentioned, there are other substances also harmful that do not fall under COSHH because they have their own regulations. We are going to look at that in further detail in the next section. The COSHH legislation binds substances that are considered hazardous to health in the workplace under COSHH. COSHH identify the substances featured on the next slides as being hazardous to health. These include biological agents, excess dust, Substances classified under the CHIP CHIP regulations. Substances with exposure limits. Some miscellaneous substances. Biological agents. This includes bacteria and any other kind of microorganism. Biological agents fall under COSHH regulations if they are connected directly with work, such as the grain dust you may find in farming. This category also covers any bacteria present in healthcare, sewage works, catering. COSH regulations even cover situations if bacteria is present from an unknown source but spread through the workplace, for example, through an unmaintained air conditioning unit. Excess dust. If the amount of dust in the workplace environment exceeds the limit as laid out by COSHH, then it becomes subject to COSHH regulations. Substances classified as dangerous to health under CHIP regulations. As we have previously mentioned, CHIP stands for the Chemicals, Hazard Information and Packaging for Supply regulations. The substances classified under these regulations, which are identified by their warning label, require a safety data sheet under CHIP legislation. These substances also fall under COSHH regulations. HSE There is a handy approved supply list available on the HSE website, which contains most of the common hazardous substances. If the substances feature in the list, they fall under COSHH. However, you must be aware that this list is not exclusive. There may be many other not so commonly used substances that fall under COSHH that don't make the list. Under CHIP regulations, suppliers have to use other means to determine whether the substances are dangerous if they are not on the list. 
You can check out the list for yourself here. Please click the following link, Approved Supply List. Note, the HSE is a British health and safety authority who helps employers to keep their workplaces safe and employees to be safe at work. They often have plenty of advice and links to provide all of the assistance you may need concerning health and safety matters at work. Substances with specific exposure limits Some substances have exposure limits, which means that they are not hazardous to health unless they are in high quantities or the employee is exposed to them for a long period of time. These substances fall under COSHH regulations. There is a handy list to help employers determine the exposure limit of a substance which is the HSE publication EH40-2005. You can take a look at this list here. Please click the following link, EH40-2005 list. If any substances feature in the list, all COSHH regulations apply. Some miscellaneous substances. We've said it before and we'll say it again. Substances and the legislation surrounding them are complex due to the nature of what we are dealing with. Sometimes some things are not covered by CHIP regulations for usually complicated reasons, but that doesn't mean that COSHH does not cover them. As a rule of thumb, COSHH covers any other substance that can create a risk to health in the workplace and that doesn't have its own legislation. Typical examples of such substances might be pesticides, medicines, cosmetics, substances created in chemical processes. Gases also fall under this section. They are not technically hazardous to health, but they can reduce the ability to breathe by reducing oxygen and therefore fall under COSHH regulations. What is not a substance hazardous to health under COSHH? You can expect most of the substances you use in the workplace to be covered by COSHH. However, there are a few exceptions, which are 1. Biological substances that are not within the employer's remit of control. For example, a worker catches a virus while on holiday and it spreads throughout the workplace. 2. Lead and asbestos. These are substances that require separate regulations due to the severity of the risks to health involved with them. 3. Substances which are only hazardous in certain situations. They are radioactive, become dangerous at high pressure or extreme temperatures, are explosive or flammable. In these situations, there are other regulations in place to manage the risk appropriately. Tip. If there is a chip warning label on a substance, you can expect that to fall under COSHH. Most of the substances without a warning label generally are not covered by COSHH, although there will be some exceptions to this rule. Effects of hazardous substances The effects of hazardous substances can be short-lived, long-standing, mild, severe, permanent, life-threatening, disabling, everything else in between. The effects are diverse because the nature of the substance combined with the exposure will have a unique impact on the health of an individual. But if it is regulated, any kind of exposure is not going to be good.
Typical examples of how hazardous substances can affect the health of an individual are Skin issues These effects usually occur through direct contact with a hazardous substance and can cause Skin irritation Dermatitis Breathing issues These types of issues usually occur from breathing in fumes or through developing an allergy to the substance you might frequently use. Inhaling a dangerous substance doesn't just harm the lungs, though. Some of these substances can harm our blood and vital organs, too. Typical examples of breathing conditions that can be caused by inhaling dangerous substances are Asthma COPD Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease Bronchitis Some of these issues can develop long after the person has experienced exposure to the substances. For example, a bathroom fitter using a variety of substances in an enclosed space every day without using PPE develops asthma and frequently suffers from chest infections. Cancer Cancer is another effect of hazardous substance exposure that can develop long after an individual has been exposed. Unfortunately, it's a common effect too. Viruses and other bacterial infections Biological substances can cause infections which can either clear up quickly or can cause long-term damage to the body that can be life-threatening. Immediate injury caused by loss of consciousness Loss of consciousness may not be the most apparent effect of hazardous substances on health, but in some situations an individual can be so overcome by fumes that they lose consciousness. Depending on what caused that incident will determine any effects on health. However, there are further health and safety hazards involved in this situation. For example, what if somebody loses consciousness while working at height or using heavy machinery? The risk of further damage is huge because workers could harm themselves and others around them by losing control of themselves or any substances and machinery while they are unconscious. Summary COSHH stands for the Control of Substances Hazardous to Health Regulations Act and is the legislation in place to prevent workers from experiencing harm when using hazardous substances in the workplace. COSHH has nine hazard symbols which will appear on all the packaging of all substances that COSHH regulated. These symbols are orange or red diamond with a white background and black symbols. You can identify hazardous substances by the packaging, which is labelled according to strict legislation. The effects of hazardous substances on health are wide and varied, though generally not very good. There can be some short-term effects on health, but there is an equal or even high risk that the effects can have long-term damage on health and can also be life-threatening both instantly and over time. Some of the illnesses caused by hazardous substances are asthma, cancer, breathing problems, skin issues and irritations and immediate injury caused by loss of consciousness.